from the authors of Author Masterminds. This is Mysterious. Mystery surrounds us every day. Join us and listen to true stories of mystery, from human behavior to nature and the physical environment to paranormal experiences. The stories are true, even if we can't explain them. Welcome to a journey through one of America's most haunting enigmas, the Mothman of Point Pleasant. I'm Marianne Paul, America's Lady of Supernatural Thrillers. Welcome to a special Halloween episode of Mysterious. I have a true frightening Halloween story to keep you up at night. And then when I finish my tale, author Steve Levi will share his poem, The Phantom Dog Sled. Be sure to stay tuned at the end of this episode because you don't want to miss Steve's poem. I love mysteries of all kinds, but my favorites are the, of the supernatural variety. My writing reflects my passion. The oldest conflict in the world, good versus evil, is the center of my books. When I was a child, it wasn't uncommon to hear stories in our family about rocking chairs which moved by themselves, a room in our grandparents' farmhouse no one slept in because a spirit would appear at night, or encounters with evil by friends of the family. Because these stories were related to me by people I knew and trusted, I became interested in hauntings. Which brings me to the topic of this episode. Mothman is one of the best-known cryptids in North America. This cryptozoological creature first gained notoriety after many residents of the small town of Point Pleasant, West Virginia, first encountered it in the mid-1960s. This mysterious entity has sparked years of debate and fascination. With its eerie red eyes and immeasurable wingspan causing a blend of terror and intrigue within the paranormal community and beyond. The creature is usually described as a large winged creature who stands over six feet tall with a wingspan of six to ten feet across, terrifying red glowing eyes, and an owl-like body covered in gray or black feathers or fur. Mothman is often thought of as a portent of impending doom and tragedy. Throughout the centuries, other such creatures have been reported. The Banshee is also a herald of an oncoming death or disaster. The Banshee is a supernatural being in Irish or Celtic folklore whose wailing screams or lamentations at night are believed to foretell the death of a family member of the person who heard the spirit. Typically, the Banshee also has glowing red eyes. In Hindu mythology, there is a creature named the Garudu. The Garudu is depicted as having a human body and the beak, talons, and wings of a bird. The Garudu description is much like that of Mothman. Mothman is most famously associated with a tragedy in Point Pleasant in 1967. Sightings of the Mothman have waned since the late 1960s after culminating in a bridge collapse tragedy but there have been some reported sightings of the creature throughout the years in Point Pleasant and its surrounding areas, and even across the continents, since the initial wave of the reports in West Virginia in the mid-1960s. UFOlogists claim that Mothman sightings in Moscow foreshadowed the 1999 Russian apartment bombings. In 2016, it is claimed the Point Pleasant Mothman reappeared in Point Pleasant. A man took pictures of a creature. In the pictures, the creature appears to have wings with pointed tips and long legs bent at an awkward angle. In 2019, there was a sighting in southern Michigan of a creature whose description matched those in Point Pleasant to a T. But today, let's talk about the first sighting which made the news. Point Pleasant, West Virginia. In 1996... The tranquil town of Point Pleasant became an epicenter for paranormal activity, thrust into the limelight by whispers of a mysterious entity named the Mothman. This once peaceful locale, brimming with an air of normalcy, evolved into a labyrinth of paranormal enigmas 
the Mothman at its nucleus, personifying humanity's most primitive fears and insatiable curiosities. The inception of the Mothman in this unsuspecting town wove a tapestry of fear, speculation, and endless questions. The everydays of Point Pleasant were transformed into continual interplays between the known and the unknown, the logical and the supernatural. The mysteries spun by the appearance of this elusive creature became food for thought for both locals and paranormal enthusiasts worldwide. The TNT area near Point Pleasant, laden with remnants of war, unfolded as the nexus for Mothman encounters. It may be because people thought Mothman was a mutant created from radiation they thought present at this site, but no matter the reason, it became widely believed this area was Mothman's home base. To further this hypothesis, the Mothman was first spotted in the TNT area by a couple who reported seeing a huge winged man at the gate of the abandoned munitions storage facility. It's called the TNT area because during World War II, that area of more than 8,000 acres was devoted to an ammunition manufacturing facility that, at its peak, employed a few thousand people. For safety reasons, the explosives were stored in a bunker, or igloos as they were called, strategically scattered across the territory and disguised by a thick layer of earth. During the height of the Mothman visitations, this area provided a geographical connection to the town and may be a reason for it to be sighted so often in the town. I mean, if the TNT area was its home, then it might venture to surrounding towns and farms. Logical, right? Some of the witnesses saw the creature standing on the side of the road, while others spotted the beast standing outside their homes. The quote thing, unquote, described as a huge bird-like creature with eyes like, quote, red reflectors, unquote, and a wingspan of about 10 feet, was first reported to police by Steve Millett and Roger Scarberry and their wives, who said they saw it three times on the previous Tuesday and early Wednesday. On November 16th, Raymond and Kathleen Walmsley, along with their friend Marcella Bennett, saw the monster next to their parked car. It rose up slowly from the ground, explained Bennett, a big gray thing bigger than a man with terrible glowing red eyes. Her fear was obvious. Marcella Bennett's testimony gave a voice to the silent concerns of her neighbors and others who saw this enigma. Kenneth Duncan of Blue Creek near Charleston said he and some other men were digging his brother-in-law's grave on Saturday when something that, quote, looked like a brown human being, unquote, buzzed past. It was gliding through the trees and was in sight for about a minute, Duncan said. But the four other men helping to dig the grave didn't see it. A contractor, Newell Partridge, who lives a 100 miles to the north of Point Pleasance, said he believes the Mothman may have had something to do with the disappearance of his $350 German Shepherd dog, Bandit. Partridge said he sighted the thing in a meadow near his home in Doddridge County about 50 minutes before the Point Pleasant sightings. Partridge said his television set began acting like a generator and Bandit started carrying on something terrible. Partridge said he shined a flashlight into the field and saw something with eyes like, quote, red reflectors, unquote. The dog's hair stood straight up, he said, and the animal went into the field. The dog never returned. Partridge said, and there was no trace of it in the morning. Newell Partridge's uncanny experience and the mysterious disappearance of his dog Bandit raised riveting questions regarding the Mothman's objectives. The distressing incident hinted at the creature's mysterious capabilities, not to mention its intentions. Reported Mothman sightings in the TNT area continued until 1967, but then a catastrophic event occurred. Let me pause for a moment. If you enjoy stories about the unexplained and supernatural forces, I invite you to read my latest book and take a journey through Andalusia Forest. Andalusia is a theme park that once bustled with excitement, but now lies abandoned, steeped in mysterious legends and tales of hauntings. This once beloved destination is still imbued with a captivating allure, a magnet for both treasure seekers and the curious. 
In this intriguing setting, a tenacious ghost hunter, Chloe Melbourne, teams up with the adventurous iconoclast trio of Cat, Ken, and Bart. What starts out as a straightforward mission to locate a missing friend quickly becomes an exploration of the forest's deeper secrets. No longer home to the whimsical creatures that once danced in the minds of its audience, Andalusia Forest reveals chilling truths hidden in its shadows. Why not embark on this exciting journey? The gates are open for those willing to venture into the unknown. You're invited to discover the enigmatic entities that inhabit these haunting woods. With a balanced blend of whimsy and reality, the tale of Andalusia Forest offers a thrilling yet measured experience. So take a bold step and let the answers reveal themselves through your exploration. Andalusia Forest awaits. Will you heed the call? Andalusia Forest is now available for purchase on Amazon Barnes & Noble and where good books are sold. Check the show notes for the links. At 5 p.m. December 15, 1967, eyewitnesses recall there was a loud gunshot-like noise and, quote, folding like a deck of cards, unquote, in less than 20 seconds, the entire 1,460-foot suspended portion of the Silver Bridge collapsed into the river, taking with it 32 vehicles and 46 victims, including two whose bodies were never found. On that day, locals saw Mothman on top of, or flying over, the Silver Bridge. According to lore, shortly after the creature was spotted, the bridge collapsed. The sightings of Mothman were numerous until the day of the tragic collapse of the Silver Bridge across the Ohio River near Point Pleasant, West Virginia. Since December 15, 1967, sightings of this enigmatic creature are much less frequent. The unanticipated collapse of the Silver Bridge and the abrupt disappearance of the creature made the Mothman an immediate omen of disaster. The disaster thrust Mothman sightings into the role of a spectral harbinger of doom, an omen forewarning humanity of impending catastrophes. Throughout time, there has been a foretelling of disasters to come. One example is a similar winged creature dubbed the Black Bird of Chernobyl was sighted just months before the Chernobyl disaster. I'm not sure what to make of the Mothman. I believe sightings are right up there with Bigfoot. Anyone who sees such an apparition will probably be convinced of its existence. Without seeing it firsthand, I would say it is hard for any person to believe. I do tend to believe something supernatural happened in Point Pleasant from 1966 to 1967. There were too many witnesses. What happened, I don't know. This podcast is an overview of the events in Point Pleasant, West Virginia, in the mid-1960s. For more in-depth information about the sightings, I suggest reading John Keel's book, The Mothman Prophecies, or watching the 2002 film by the same name. Thanks for listening, and now, please stand by for a poem about a ghostly apparition in Alaska. Five feet of snow, the Yukon still flowed in the cold snap of 1928, and the blue of the snow at 60 below lay fluffed as a ptarmigan's paint. There were sun dogs by day that peeked through the spray of ice crystals swept in from the west, while at night the sky danced with a glory enhanced from Burnt Paw to Alicaquet. Some miners in Gwich'in huddled inside their kitchen round the pot-bellied stove and oak rocker. There was Jerome and his wife, Billy Boy with his lice, Julie and Benji and Walker. They stared at the flames and muttered vile names, keeping their thoughts off of grieving. For Sarah Jean Carroll, who'd caught a buck-laden barrel and fought for her life, barely wheezing. Now all around the fire, they vented their ire, 
yet the family and guests knew the score, that one had to go plow over the snow from ramparts to Fairbanks. Once more, he had to return with a doctor or learn how a layman could administer aid to a gut that's been sewn with a needle of bone and stitched tight with long hair tied in braids. At first they had waited as though it was fated that Sarah would pull through all right, but the gurgle of blood on her pillow did flood and trickled in streams quite a fright. The planes were all grounded, their skis had been foundered when the cold snap had frozen them tight. Now all that was left, as the planes were bereft, was a long, lonely, cold dog sled ride. They all knew the wager, the price of a savior, and the snap of winter's cold whip. Yet they all swore to go, like the flight of a crow, on this, the most holy of trips. And so they drew straws from Jerome's mighty paw, to gamble the privilege to go, to race old man winter with dog sleds and dinter, the crest of the virginal snow. Jerome drew the longest, and Benji's was strongest. Walker's was long but was lean. And Billy Boy tried to cover his pride when his was the shortest. It seemed that the threat of the trip in winter's stern grip and the perils of trail and of storm gave him no fear, and he said with a sneer, By God, but it looks like I've won. Older men know that the price of the snow is black lips and ice-frosted beard. And stopping means lion, and lion means dying, and always Nakani is steered. Through frost-heavy woods, over frozen stream floods, to the pant of a dog-tired team. It stocks the unwary, the fools are his quarry, as are the crippled, the weak, and the green. But the wheeze from the marrow sank like an arrow in Billy's heart covered with fur, where it throbbed in his chest as it did in her breast, and his need to be off made him stir. From his seat by the fire, in the smoke of the briar, stilling the rage in his soul, he sprang to his feet, this bold athlete, and into the bedroom he strolled. Bending over the bed where the blood trickled red, whistling strains of sweet Molly McGee. He kissed her hot cheeks and nose like a beak, and then he knelt down on his knees for the help of the one who gave his own son as a martyr to those who would care to challenge the wind or the mob's awesome grin and those with the courage to dare. Then he tethered his dogs and fastened his togs. With jerky he piled his sled high. And he whistled that tune in the light of the moon as the stars twinkled high in the sky. Like a hurricane spire, the northern lights fire filled the sky with green and with rose. And Billy Boy gambled with the draw of the bramble with that straw that he broke when he chose. With a yell he was off in the snow and the frost, and yet, as he vanished from sight, it seemed that the flakes an aura did make, which encircled him in this wild flight. Then the hush of the wind in winter's grim grin rooted about in the trees, and the last that they heard, like the wail of a bird, were the strains of sweet Molly McGee. In three days the storm, with the speed of a worm, crawled west toward Gnome's Norton Sound, and a flight from the city on an errand of pity skidded weird on the ice-covered ground. With a doctor aboard for a child who'd been gored by the blast of the gun-cotton beast, but the effort was late, for the child had a date, and at long last her wheezing did cease. Jerome and his wife cried into the night, alone round the pot-bellied fire, for the child that was gone and the hope that was spawned and now the flames seemed but a pyre. And together they waited to tell of the fated, a task which gave them no joy, to bear bitter tidings to the one who had been driving the dogs, the 
young Billy Boy. For two weeks they waited, and waited, and waited, and Billy Boy still hadn't arrived. And the days they grew longer, and the light ever stronger, and the green buds on the ground did strive to grow through the slush of winter's last muck to reach for the springtime sun. And when the ice broke, neither one spoke, for they knew Billy Boy never come. Now the days of the dogs and wolverine togs are tales of the Northland's twilight. And the roar of the snow goes, shatter the snow, and professors now ponder the lights. But sometimes they say, when the howl and the spray of winter has died in the trees, a phantom sled glides, and a ghost aboard rides, wheezing strains of sweet Molly McGee. Ever hear tell a sweet Molly McGee Came north to Alaska from London Derry With a pack full of whiskey, a shovel and pan If you enjoyed this podcast, please check out the show notes. You will find links to the Author Mastermind store and Readers and Writers Book Club. You will also find out more about me and where to acquire my books, including my newly released fifth book, Andalusia Forest. Until next time, may the sun be on your face, the wind at your back, and the good Lord walk beside you. Settled in Ruby with a Malamute dog, living high on moose steaks and imported hogs. Bought up a share of the Irish saloon, with whiskey and nuggets she howls at the moon. Triampoliolo, riampoliam, triampoliolo, riampoliam.